Welcome back and thanks for tuning in on this video. It's a little bit of a change in pace for me uh, from talking about telescopes, cameras, and all that good stuff, because today I'm talking about a 3D printer. And you might be wondering, why, why, why am I talking about a 3D printer? And the reality is because 3D printing has come a long way. And because of that, it's actually plausible to actually go out and print things like model rockets. Well, this is a toy rocket. Um, this is actually also a toy rocket. Um, but my plan is to actually print a model rocket and see how it goes, but also other things like print a telescope or print a cell for your mirror or other objects traditionally go and actually make out of like metal, steel, etc. And not everyone has those tools. And I definitely don't have a steel workshop here. Um, I'm in my garage and I have this 3D printer here and I can tell you that it's got some really good stuff. So this video is actually sponsored by Arion. They actually gave me a nice discount to do this review. Although I will mention that Arion does do various discounts um, with surprising frequency. Um, the 3D printing market is actually very competitive. So if you see a printer price and you're like, oh, this is expensive because I think it retails for about $700. Um, realize that, you know, some snooping around, you can generally get about 50 to 100 bucks off the actual price. So I'm going to quickly go over some of the specs of the Arion uh, Thinker SE that you might want to consider. So first of all, it's Bowden tube design, um, E3D V6 design of a hot end. Uh, it's a 300 by 300 by 400 print volume. And generally you're going to print about 60 millimeters per second. And it comes with a 0.4 nozzle. Obviously you can switch out that nozzle to from 0.25 up to about 0.8. I think there's a one millimeter nozzle available as well. but Again, that's aftermarket modifications. Um, it is a Bowden tube design, but it is easily upgradable to a um, direct drive. And I've heard good things from people who've done it as a direct drive system. So it is a larger scale printer, but it's got a lot of common components that you can do. It does run on Marlin uh, and it comes out of the box with 1.1.9. I would have liked to had 2.0 on there, um, but I don't know much about how that firmware works in terms of like adding a BL touch and stuff, but the firmware works. It's basic, but it, it does work. I highly suggest that you buy a Raspberry Pi and you get a program called OctoPrint. So what it does is it controls your printer from the Raspberry Pi and it creates a web interface that you can log in to locally from any computer in your house or your phone. And you can go and basically control your printer without having to sit in front of it. And if you add a web camera or a Pi camera or something like that, you can actually go and control it. And with the Thinker SE, that's mainly how I was using it after about the second day. And it works really well. Um, I've been really glad because I can sit on my computer working on something, have the second monitor showing me what's going on in the printer. And I have confidence that everything's going well and I don't necessarily have to sit out here. Um, now, why did I go with an Arion Thinker SE is probably gonna be people's first question. And that's because it can print big things. Now, it actually printed the tip of this, which I'll show you in a photo, but then I accidentally dropped it. And I didn't have time to actually go and print a new one. Printing is slow. It takes a while to make things. Although once you do, try not to break them. Um, you can also make like not very usable things, but neat things like this is a vase. Um, you can make uh, little tiny boats. Yeah, things that are cool. So set up the printer was pretty easy. I did actually do a live stream of that and you can click here and watch the whole thing or you can just sit back and relax and get sort of the three minute abridged version. So overall the packaging was really good. The printer is actually pretty simple to uh, put together. You basically attach the gantry, plug in some wires and you're pretty much off to the races. Now so the quick build guy is not the greatest. It's actually not bad. And if you built 3D printers before, um, you'll be able to get through this pretty quick. If this is your first 3D printer, um, I have a commentary on this page here. It's step two, not step one of step two, but like step two of step two. And this is the wiring diagram. And it can be a little confusing. Um, also in all the pictures on this design, it doesn't show you where the Bowden tube system goes. Now you can go online and check it out, but if you don't know where the Bowden system is supposed to go, you might wire it up a little differently like I did. Um, 
Fortunately, no damage was done, and I fixed it afterwards. But it's just one of those things where it's like you can make rookie mistakes if this is your first time doing it, and uh, you don't realize how it normally is done. So other than getting it set up and going, and actually my first print, um, which I have right here, actually turned out pretty darn well. And from there, I went and I ran through a series of calibration steps for like the E step, um, for stringing, which actually, this was the first stringing test, actually was pretty low. And then um, I was able to get that down to about right here. And this is good um, to test that sort of tested wall thickness. Oh, there it goes. So one of the things I want to say about calibrating the printer, um, other than the first print I had was a bit of user error because I actually put it on base mode. Whoops. Um, and then my second print, I ended up having it a little too chunky. Um, we go to my third print, and it actually looks pr pr third. Which was third print? The third print actually looks pretty good, but it 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 only partially worked, and it broke in a couple places. Um, the fifth print, I made another user error, and this was printer number six, and actually it turns quite a lot, but the uh, cylinders themselves uh, were still jammed in there. And that's the point where I realized I really, um, really got close, but I had some issues. So I looked at the printer, I went through and like recalibrated everything, tried my best, and I ended up with this guy here. Now this guy here actually almost works um, if I turn this side here. So it actually rotates and stuff, um, and it actually does sort of go pretty well, which when you consider this is my first 3D printer and I haven't really done this before, I'm actually pretty impressed. Um, there's one part here that just kind of broke for the first cylinder. I'm going to super glue that together and, and get this whole thing to work. But I count this as a win. I'll probably print this again, but I have a few backlog pieces I wanted to print. But yeah, this is a really hard thing to print. A lot of people can't get their printers to do this for calibration reasons and just skill level. So the fact that I was able to do this without any knowledge about the 3D printer shows this 3D printer is capable of some pretty amazing stuff, which I then printed next. So I've been printing some Batonoff masks for astronomy, and I've been pretty busy printing them. I've tried a couple different designs, and I have a couple videos on that. And the reason that I've been doing that and the reason why I got the larger printer is so I could print those large, flat, um, objects. I also want to print some bigger things as well, um, but mainly it was the big large flat objects um, because in the 3D printing world you generally go from like 100 millimeters up to 200 millimeters up to 300 millimeters and then from there you're sort of into like the very exclusively large printers or industrial printers. So for me I sat there and said well eight and a half inches isn't really big enough for what I want to do for some of the prints and I did want the higher Z level so I went for that. Um, so that's one of the nice standpoints of the Thinker SE. And if you're looking at getting a large printer, the Thinker SE is probably a very good choice for you. Some of the things I like about the Thinker SE. One, it actually was very easy to put together and it actually printed out of the box, which I was actually quite impressed with. I know several years ago when I first looked at doing 3D printing, Unless you went out and bought like a really high-end unit, you were sort of getting this grab bag of maybe it will work for you. Whereas nowadays, they work out of the box, they work well. Obviously, I had to calibrate it, um, but the calibration is sort of getting it from going to from good to great to amazing. Um, and it will take you, I would say, about a day or two to calibrate it, depending on if you're going to sit in front of the printer all day or if you're going to like have a print here or a print there. Um, it does take a little bit of time, although if this is your first time, expect the first month to be a little iffy. A little iffy, a lot of iffy, um, and that's a lot of user error um, and mistakes and the occasional whoops on the bed height, um, which actually stays together pretty good, but you have to realize that you do need to check it. Like I would say check your bed height every week or so. Some people do it every print. Especially if you're doing like a, a large print or something like that, I would definitely recommend you check it. Um, again, with this rocket here, um, other than the fact that I dropped it and broke the tip off, um, this was a full Z print. So it printed all the way from zero all the way up to uh, 400 millimeters without a problem. 
um, and then I dropped it and broke the tip. Good job, me. So in terms of noise, I don't know if you can hear it through the lav mic. It isn't super quiet. It's not noisy, um, but when I was walking around like my iPhone and using it as like a sound detector, which isn't the greatest thing to do in the world, it was coming out about 50, 55, occasionally peaked to like 63, depending on where I was holding the phone. Um, it's not one of those things where it's super quiet that you're going to forget to turn it on. I hear people say it all the time. I don't agree. I can say if you're wearing headphones and you're playing computers or if you're doing something else, it's not going to be distracting noise, but it's not like you're not going to realize that that is on versus that being off. Um, most of the noise is actually coming out of the hot end cooling fan. So there's an option to... So you can always look at upgrading it to like a Noctula. Um, this is actually not for that yet. I'm probably buy one. And by doing this, you can upgrade it to a super quiet fan. Um, again, it's one of those things that it would be nice if it was shipped with a slightly quieter fan. But at the end of the day, for most people, I think that noise is fine. For people who are like, I want it really quiet. Um, these aren't that expensive. So my first print was this cube. Um, it actually worked out pretty well. I then went and printed this maker coin. I went and printed this on a pretty high speed. Um, I had overlaps, some other stuff. I just wanted to sort of see could I actually make something and have it printed and it came out looking like I expected it to. So that's sort of what I did. It's a little maker coin. People apparently make these all the time. And then of course people make the boots. These are called Benchies. If you haven't heard of Benchy yet, you clearly haven't read up about 3D printing. They're little boats and basically they uh, get they test a whole bunch of things on the printer. Um, they have specific dimensions to them that you can check. Um, they do check different gradients and stuff like that. So they're actually pretty cool. Um, and you end up printing a lot of them. <laughs> I only have two because then I switched to these little tiny rockets. I'm like, I'm a space channel. I talk about space and astronomy. So let's make these little tiny like um, spanner rockets. And I made these guys here, and they're actually pretty cool. And I figured some stuff out with these guys. Um, I also made some temp towers. Again, this is a lot of calibration stuff. So one note I want to talk about, if you're starting out in 3D printing and you're thinking, am I going to get this as my first printer? Um, the answer is yes, you can do it. Um, you do need to realize that you're probably going to spend the first month tweaking it, fiddling around, etc. Um, it is a great printer. Um, it does produce some really nice prints. But at the same time, like any printer, you do have to massage it a little bit. You do have to work out little kinks here. Um, out of the box, it prints great. But if you want that like excellent level or that tolerance where you're like 0.15 tolerance and stuff, you do need to calibrate it and it'll take you a couple days to calibrate it. If you already own a 3D printer, you already know that. And you're simply trying to decide what 3D printer that's got a larger volume you want to consider purchasing. The Arion Thinker SE does fit that bill. And it works really well and i do like the fact that it's still using a lot of the same components that a lot of other printers use like it's a v6 a hot end um, standard extruder um, there's the rails the gantry are extruded aluminum so if you do somehow break something or you have a part that wears out or something like this you can go and get a replacement part you can probably get it locally. You can probably get it from Amazon. If you live in another country where you might not have these two options and you have to order stuff in, um, generally there's going to be a store that will ship to you that will have it. Um, and you're not going to have to play, find very specific parts. Now, as the 3D printing uh, community matures, obviously there's a lot of third party options. And one of the things I like about Arion is that they actually sell through Amazon. They also have their store, which I will link both of those below. And they are affiliated links because it helps my channel to pay for all the electricity and stuff I'm using to print this stuff if you want to use those links. But the one thing I like about them is that they have their direct store, but they also go through Amazon. And yes, I know some people are not fans of Amazon, but here's the thing. You break something on this printer or you need a replacement part or something, Amazon generally can get it to you within the week, if not two days. Like that's not a lot of downtime versus some of the other options where you're like, oh no, I need this specific part. Where am I going to get it? You know, and again, it's just one of those things I liked about it. The other thing I liked about Arion as a company is that I could actually message them and ask some questions and say, I'm looking at buying a printer. 
and I had some questions about your printer to get an idea if this is the right printer for me. And I actually got a pretty active response. And when I ran into the problem with the extruder, I messaged them and again, I got a response. Now they're off 12 hours um, compared to me. Um, so it's a response in the middle of the night. But since I was doing astronomy, I was awake anyway. But the point being is that they, they seem to have a customer service, very strong, very uh, prominent. And again, they run mainly through their Facebook group and their Facebook uh, profiles. Um, you can also email the company, but generally I would say if you go to the Facebook pro pro uh, groups and you say, I have a problem, somebody's either going to be able to tell you the solution or one of their official reps is going to jump in there and help you out. So I, I, I can't say that yet of any other company. I have contacted a couple different companies and I haven't quite got that level of service, but um, I'm going to test some other 3D printers and we're going to see what we get from them. Now, it wasn't all rosy. I did run into one technical problem um, with the extruder. Um, basically, the connector that holds the Teflon tube had loosened and it allowed the Teflon tube to move out and the filament actually got jammed in there. And as you can see from this video here, not great. Um, I did check. It wasn't a clog. It was actually the extruder filament and the little piece inside there actually broke. So fortunately there was a spare in the box and I was able to use that. But I did reach out to Arion and they did um, send me a free replacement part um, so that I had a spare um, in case it does break down at a later date. And the way they did this was I bought it off of Amazon. They gave me like a 99% discount. So it showed up and it cost me like 10 cents to replace. And when I put it back together, I double checked and made sure everything was good to go. And it hasn't given me a problem since. So one last thing, Arion actually sells a combo pack of silk filaments. You get silk gold, silk copper, and silk rainbow. And each of them is 500 grams. And it costs a little bit more than your normal one kilogram roll. But this is a great um, starter pack um, for this printer. Because you get to try silk and there's two colors. And the rainbow color actually is pretty cool. I'm going to be covering this more in depth in an upcoming video, which I'll probably have a link here. Um, but yeah, this is definitely something to consider, especially if you're new to 3D printing. Arion filament, Arion printer, enough said. So I'm going to end off this video by telling you about some of the projects I have coming up. So be sure to give a like, a subscribe, all that good stuff, because that basically helps motivate me to make more videos about making things with 3D printing, but also it helps me um, grow as a channel and that helps fund some stuff, including the affiliate link below. Um, one of the things I'd like to do is actually 3D print my own telescope. So that's going to be a fun project. I also want to 3D print a all sky camera. Um, again, another Raspberry Pi kind of thing. Um, but I think that would actually be pretty cool and being able to design a telescope and saying here's the designs on how to do the telescope and again with the raspberry uh, with the all sky camera being able to say here's how I made an all sky camera. I feel that is adding value to the community. I realize some people have done it a couple different ways. There's still not a lot of astronomers out there with 3D printers that are going to say hey here's a video on how to do that. So if you feel like that's something cool leave a comment below again like and subscribe that does help my channel. And I'd like to thank you for watching and um, have a good evening or clear skies or the sky is on fire. Because when you think about it, the sky is on fire, which is Ember Sky Media. Have a good night.